strategy. different now. Physical relations in places a physical restraint upon the desires and activities of others it is a form of physical cohesion. Even apparently nonviolent action could lead to hurt. Gandhi's boycott of British textiles, for example, hurt British textile workers. Nabor gave the impression of being more irritated by the self righteousness of the practitioners of nonviolence than the practice itself. He appreciated its potential advantages protecting the agent against the resentments which violent conflict always creates in both parties to a conflict. It could also demonstrate an interest in a peaceful resolution. Intriguingly, Niebuhr noted that potential strategic value of nonviolence for an oppressed group, which is hopelessly in the minority and has no possibility of developing sufficient power to set against its oppressors. He added that for that reason, it would be appropriate for the emancipation of the Negro race in America. In American Gandhi, in May 1942, the first organized civil rights sit-in in American history took place at the Jack Spratt Coffee House in Chicago when a group of 28 people divided themselves up into small groups, each including at least one black man or woman and sat down the coffee how small staff was caught in confusion, especially as attempts to avoid serving the blacks at all, or at most serve them out of sight, gain little sympathy for from either other, either other customers or the police when they were called. This effort was successful, taking place in Chicago before the city's later deterioration in race relations. It was not as severe. A test as would later be faced in southern states, but it demonstrated the possibility that firm but polite action might disorient racist and expose discrimination. At the heart of the action was James Farmer, a young African American from Texas who had graduated in theology. He was then the race relations secretary for the Fellowship of Reconciliation, FOR, a strongly pacifist group based in New York. It was formed in 1915 by a number of leading anti-war figures including Jane Addams and A.J. Must, a minister who later became an active trade unionist and socialist. Must was FOR's executive director from 1940 to 1953. Over this period, pacifists once again found themselves on the wrong side of a popular cause. This time, the evil of the enemy was more than propagandist bombast and the country had been caught by a surprise attack. Farmer had been agitating to establish a distinct organization charged with promoting racial equality and was permitted to see if something could be achieved in Chicago before consideration was given to taking his idea further. There was already an FOR group at the University of Chicago led by George Hauser, who had been thinking along similar lines. Together, they formed the committee, later Congress of Racial Equality, CORE, it eventually became more important than its parent, distracted already by the war. FOR now had young activists wishing to employ tactics that were provocative and bound to raise tensions. Moving beyond love and reason to cohesion, when Farmer first when Farmer first presented to FOR his brother mobilization plan, he faced objections on the grounds that not only were this divert effort and attention away from the anti war effort, but also that the protests would be Warlike, not overly violent, but sufficient to disrupt peace and tranquility, and to fail a turn to turn the racist heart toward justice. Farmer saw these Tolstoy-like arguments as supporting passivity, failure to act would perpetrate the everyday violence of segregation. He believed in the not, he believed in the non-violent creed, but his standard was effectiveness, not purity of motive. For the same reason, he did not wish court to be open only to true pacifists, he told a disappointed 
Miles, who had mixed feelings about a new national, not overly pacifist organization, the masses of Negroes will not become pacifists. Being Negroes for them is tough enough without being pacifists too. Neither will the masses of whites. Farmer's Guide, when taking on Jack Spratt's coffee house, was Christian Adnall, Shidder Downey, a journalist who had followed Gandhi in India to the point of being arrested. His war without violence was pragmatic and practical, manual alerting practitioners to focus on the evil rather than the evil doer and ensure that the action was directly relevant to the particular evil being addressed. His description of the effect of nonviolence on opponents was largely drawn from Greg and stressed the psychological confusion caused by unexpected tactics. He was a guest speaker at Gore's founding conference in June 1943. Former reported surprise that instead of a Gandhi-like figure, a static and bony, he found a well-dressed and well-fed bra man, bra man, with rings on his fingers and smoking a cigar. Perhaps it was therefore not surprising that Shidharani played down the moral aspects of Gandhiism and stressed the strategic dwelling on the opportunities provided by modern media to use dramatic actions to spread a political message. He suspected that American pastors exaggerated the spiritual dimensions of an Indian movement that was largely secular. The religious aspect of Satyagra were of propaganda and publicity reasons as well as for the personal satisfaction of deeply conscientious men like Gandhi and his disciples on violence had been adopted for earthly, tangible, and collective aims and so could be discarded if it does not work. He grasped the impact of the, of the refusal to engage with the 